Yes, fatherlessness is a huge problem, but I think it comes from the breakdown of brotherhood. If I had strong brothers around me, they wouldn't let me be a knucklehead dad. They wouldn't let me be a knucklehead husband. They would be in my face, giving me a, a, a reality check. You only get to treat other people that disrespectfully when you're the master of your own universe. None of us are ready, but none of us have arrived. It's we're all in progress, but we get to choose to stay on the path of, uh, and that, this is why I love Job chapter 38. You mentioned this a couple times in the book, but I, and I think this is God like challenging Job. And he, it's <laughs> Job, it Job 38, three. And so as God said to Job, yeah, I call you to prepare yourself like a man, like and, a man. Yeah. and and that that kind of we're not going to hold anything back. I mean, this would from the first couple episodes of the Dragon Slayer podcast that you guys just launched to, I mean, really the whole meta theme of the book. Um, I I just feel like the way of the Dragon Slayer is a man up, a take ground, a like you don't. This is not the time to play it safe. This is the time in brotherhood to step in and, and and really slay every day. I think is this phrase you guys use, like, no, we're actually, it's a battle. And you yeah. give at the end of each chapter, you give uh, your sword section of, this is like truth from scripture that will add. Uh, so um, I thought maybe instead of walking through all seven, just top of mind, kind of on your heart right now, what what are a few of the dragons, a few of the topics that you'd say, hey, this, this is going to be helpful for the Dad Awesome community? Yeah, well, I can, I can rip through them quickly and then we can kind of hop Perfect. around but, you know it's it it really is that first dragon you know man and god has got to get nailed because if you don't get that you you carry with you a a a wound that has a lie in it and you will misrepresent our father that's just going to happen and it sets you up to struggle even more deeply with the other six dragons. You know, the next dragon is man and himself. Now, this is where you have really got to grow your discernment and be able to tell yourself the truth and not get wrapped up in the accusations and the lies that come from making mistakes. You know you better than the devil knows you, right? And you can accuse you way better than him. So he just kind of sits back half the time and just lets you tear yourself apart. Yeah. Uh, then we have man and women, which I, I probably don't even need to convince anybody that that's a dragon, but it strips us down so fast because we're so afraid of being hurt. We're just so afraid of being hurt that we turn into control freaks. And then there's uh, man and men. And we just talked about that, you know, the, the deception of isolation and protect yourself and come together for, for a, a sport or a, a work project or something, and then isolate again, keeps you the master of your, your universe. And that is a terrible idea, guys. Man in nature, nothing will make you feel vulnerable like the ocean, yes. like a desert, you know, like a forest. You, you, you just realize how easy to kill you are, you know, you just, you just, food for something and so getting out there and facing these fears and at the same time realizing that creation is nature so creation is also your experiences of uh nature at work everywhere you go that could be you getting sick and being in the hospital or it could be you get in a car accident or whatever you know you you are faced with your mortality and eternity a uh, man and machine man and machine is probably man's closest attempt to be a creator you know and at the same time interacting with that uh there's just so much going on with with uh fear of failure being out of control and or dying right and then man and provision and that really has a lot to do with the the amount of benefit you bring to those around you it's it it it, it can be something to you know you, how much money do you make okay that's in there but it's really how much benefit do you create around you and how is your heart set on that and how do you stay out of the fear of lack and limitation and comparison 
So that would be the seven yeah. dragons in a nutshell. That's so helpful to have the flyover. Now, part of the monthly Zoom call that you have with your 12, I know you ask, uh, like, what's the what's the area, that, what's the head of the dragon this month? Like, what's what's which of these seven? Is that is that question? Do I have that right? Well, uh, the, the head of the dragon would be, we've done it so, you know, over four years. We've sure. gone through so much stuff. The first year, I just had each guy introduce himself. You know, that took 12 months, right? Yeah. You know, it was uh, actually the first six months we planned a trip in, in in Alaska, which was just epic, epic, epic. But then I had each guy just kind of give their spiritual journey, their life's journey, and everybody got to meet them and see them. And it was beautiful. But when we were talking about, you know, what's the dragon head that you have this month? It was really about what what was the struggle what was the uh you know what was that like and what did you do and what did you learn you know it was it, it was just guys bringing heads of dragons like yeah i uh i fought the man and woman this month and uh, uh and some guys were like and the thing's got his foot on my neck right hey, i'm now. losing yeah i'm if losing somebody could swing at his head that would be awesome you know so there was there's was all kinds of great conversations mm, because it is a it's a framework to help dial in conversation or, and growth and like no i'm going to act i'm going to actually be a man in this category and step yeah. in uh yeah. I, man with woman like i feel like right now with the young kids season like like continuing to do work on why is this stirring up fears why like what is going on right now with the, the person i love most in this world like what's going on I, I i thought it's kind of a funny uh the name of this section that what i'm about to say is going to sound funny at first but it ties in with the uh princess bride the uh wesley uh yelling as you wish right like but it you yeah. i think you called it um uh be the sexy butler do i have that yeah. right yeah, yeah, sexy can, butler. Could you explain it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were sitting around a campfire. It's a, it's a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A bachelor party or whatever. You know, he's he's getting married in the morning, and uh, we're we're sitting around Brian Alexander. He's a just a great kid, you know, and he says, you know, everybody's jabbering away. He's just quiet, and his first question is, "Do you have any advice for me as a as a?" A new husband and and so we just go into this whole thing about uh make a commitment to serve her for a year you are her butler, butler. you will you will she will ding the bell and you will be on it and I said, you're going to have more sex and you know what to do. You're going to be like rabbits all over the house. So you're going to be her sexy butler. You, you know, and he's a bodybuilder guy. So he could get away with the Chippendale thing easily. You know, he could just walk around and have a towel on his arm and a little bow tie on his neck. And, um, and the conversation really uh, went around. Why would you do that? Why would, mm -hmm. because you're trying to eliminate that young man turns every situation into a competition. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you don't set your heart to serve her, you will set your heart to conquer her. And keep score. Yeah. And, 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 to, and to be the winner, to be mm -hmm. the winner, to just keep her under you yeah. instead of get under her. And it was a, uh, it was a great conversation. And one guy finally says, well, when do I get to be served? I said, well, that, that just shows that that thing's got to die in you, A, and then B, at the end of the year, if you've done yourself, if you've done your job well, she is going to be convinced that you actually love her. And here it comes. You make a request. And she will be on it because she'll want to protect her connection to you because you showed her that you cared. You didn't mess up the rest of your foundation by throwing rocks and pine needles and all kinds of stuff on the wet cement. You got up there and made that stuff so smooth. You can build a house on it now, baby.
it's uh i mean that story and the reframing that this is a dragon to slay it's not an arrival that great we slayed it this month we're good for the next six years no it's actually an ongoing battle the dragons keep going back but the the man with machine the reframing there of instead of seeing it casually as i need to try to have a little less screen time on my phone or i need to navigate and figure this piece out of a new technology or uh how do we give our child access to a, a, you know, a phone or this or that thinking of it as there's actually, if I'm not careful, if I don't approach this with vigilance, there actually could be death or deep harm. That's where I like the framing of like, we actually, I'm, I have a sword and I'm going to battle in this area. Uh, would you expound a little further though on a man with machine and, and why it's like, it, it actually is a dragon. It's not just a thing to be casually like figuring out boundaries within. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it, it 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 attacks us really in the um, there's a, there's the whole technology around and the whole misuse of technology and, and now we got AI so it's just like wow this thing is just getting ginormous something man created yeah is 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 now hunting him right you're like oh my gosh what are we doing I mean there's that whole thing. But the other side of it is uh, fix your dang porch light, would you? Would you please just respond to that that broken hinge on the cupboard that she keeps talking to you about? Mm. Would you just learn to use a screwdriver already? Would you mm. buy a toolkit? Will you go ahead and do a little do-it-yourself stuff? Sure. Please, you know, go in there and do it. Quit, you know, Quit putting it off because you don't want to feel stupid. You already you already look stupid. Okay, so go do something about it. Be the man. There's that end of it as well. Yeah. Yep. And then there's in the middle of it, which is get out there and take some risks. Get out there and learn some new skills. Find some guys that love to work on that stuff and learn from them. Uh, go out there and master some machine. Like <laughs> we took these guys up to Alaska uh, and put them on snow machines because yeah. they're snow machines, not snowmobiles because snowmobiles are for sissies, I think, or something. I don't know, but I got corrected until I learned to say snow machines. Snow okay. machine. So you're out there on your snow machines. Uh, now half the guys are from Alaska. They know all about them. The other half that I brought with me have never been on one or yeah. Only a couple times. And so we are we went 300 miles in a week wow. on snow machines in February. And life changing. Yes. Life changing for the guys that just to get to bond and facing their fears on a machine. It was also nature, you know, and it was men, you know, and it was all the dragons were swooping around and uh, there were no women there, but it was, uh, it was super, super beneficial, which is the other part of this is, yeah, the Zoom calls are good, but guys don't bond talking as much as they bond doing. So you got to have these, these activities that, so I have guys all over the country and I, it's my job. I take responsibility I'm the one that got the 12. I'll I'll be the hub. And I am setting up pheasant hunting. I'm setting up golfing. I'm setting up, you know, trips to this cluster of guys get together. This cluster of guys get together. I have yet to get them all 12 together in the same spot. Uh, but yet it ties with when you say that men, uh, men bond through doing and through adventure and through risk, but also the planning, because the first, I think what you said, six months of the Zoom calls was planning this adventure together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's kind of anchored. And then you went into stories and how important it was once a month to like hear somebody that really get to know the deeper levels of somebody's story. Uh, it ties though with the provision section, the, that dragon to slay around, do I have a vision for my own life, for my family? for my work. Um, do I have a vision for my 12? If I have a, a crew of guys that I've invited them into something, I better give them a clear vision or they're not going to say yes or stick to it by any, with any means. Uh, why is part of provision, why is vision and uh, clarifying a vision such a big deal? 
Yeah, well, it's it's hard to accomplish anything if you uh, can't see it, you know, if you can't get there. It very much, if you were going on vacation, uh, you better better pick a place, you know, and you better you know, define what's going to happen there, or you're just going to uh, go for a drive or something. I'm not sure what you're doing, right? Yeah. So, you know, you you really are looking down the road and you're leading. And so people are following that. And in that is, is your responsibility to bring benefit to everybody on the journey with you. That's, that's your role as a man is to think ahead and to build benefit for, for your family, for, for your legacy. You know, you were sharing with me at the break that, that downline legacy of hundreds of people that have come from you. You're like, wow, like that, that is vision. Like, oh, I'm thinking generationally. I'm not just thinking momentarily. I'm not living paycheck to paycheck. I'm living generation to generation. And so in, as a provider, you had better open up your clarity of where you're headed and who's going to be benefiting for you ever being on this planet. And that takes us right into mission. You and your um, your first group of 12, before you started inviting them to the second half of this, you came up with this mission. You said you agreed that our mission was twofold, to build a band of brothers, that's the 12, and raise up an army of fathers to heal a generation of orphaned sons. So there is a second part. There's a band of brothers that is important. Let's fight these fight these different dragons together. Let's grow together. Let's, let's be there for each other. Let's know each other's stories. Let's adventure together. Let's break through the new experiences and, 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 and grow and be more brave. But the, the second side of let's raise up an army of fathers to heal a generation of orphan sons. That's the side where you're asking your 12 to go find and invest in their 12. Could you kind of expound on the second half of that call? Yeah, and this is kind of the uh, upfront ask, really, is, you know, as I'm gathering these guys, each one of them, I said, would you commit to this for the rest of our lives? We're going to work on our brotherhood. And would you go do the same? Would you go benefit 12 guys? And you know, the, just kind of the natural order of things, it does turn into brothers and sons because you go get someone younger than you classically, you know, and so I don't know how far, I don't know how fast we can grow this before we're, you know, in the, in, in the preschools. So, <laughs> you know, we have to kind of keep it up here a little ways, but yeah, I think that uh, the, the ownership generationally is a big part of what what we're doing as brothers i i would attribute that uh or i would acknowledge yes fatherlessness is a huge problem it is but i think it comes from the breakdown of brotherhood because yeah. if if i had strong brothers around me they wouldn't let me be a knucklehead dad they wouldn't let me be a knucklehead husband they wouldn't let me get away with it. They would be in my face and, and giving me a, a, a reality check because you, you, you only get to treat other people that disrespectfully when you're the master of your own universe. Yeah. Danny, I, I did basically speed reading of about two thirds of your book to prepare for this conversation. And I, I am committing to all of our dad awesome community and to you that I'm going to do a slow read pass through the whole book. Um, because I believe that what you have pulled together and what you have lived and now are sharing is, is going to change the trajectory of like what it looks like for me to build brothers and invest in, um, and invest in others. And it's going to change my family. It's going to change the community that I live. It's going to change the ministry that I lead. And I, I want to say, thank you. Thank oh. you for your heart. I, I think these areas that I care deeply about of living as a loved son of God identity there, and then living as an intentional dad and in brotherhood and then helping kids that don't have dads, like these core things, we're just yeah. so aligned on this mission. And uh, yeah. so wanted to again, say, thank you. Uh, any thank just last you. words, any, anything else you wanted to share with our community? 
No, Jeff, I just say thank you as well. I mean, I know that you're pouring your life into the success of, of fathers and brothers and men. So I, I just really appreciate guys like you. Um, thanks for your support. Um, you know, just as this book rolls out, there's uh, it, it's, it releases on May 24th, which is National Brothers Day. I didn't even know there was uh, cool. a thing until boom. So that's that became the target. Uh, we're creating a website so that all the first gen uh, dragon slayers can can gather, and I will meet with them. You know, I'll have I'll pick up another Zoom call, and I will teach them and support them and encourage them as they go and build wow. their twelve. You know, wow. And, and then we'll do conferences and different gatherings, and you know, it'll 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 become a thing. And we have this cool logo. I just, I, I'm just waiting for all the pictures of yes. tattoos, you know. Like, yes. Oh, yeah. uh, so you're saying that this there's going to be a lot more conversations, Danny, that we're going to have you back to keep inviting us in. So yeah. look out. Well, yeah. thank you. Would you say a short prayer over all of us as we say goodbye? Absolutely. Father, thank you so much for designing us as men, calling us to, to be providers and protectors and connectors, Lord. I pray that you would just breathe on us as a generation. Uh, no one comes to you except that you call them. And Lord, I pray that you call men to you, that we would pick up and that we would know you so that we could represent you in all the areas of our lives. Lord, thank you for the courage and the strength, the spirit of power and love and a sound mind. Thank you for... Uh, arming us to face these dragons, to face this life and be successful for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen.